What's up guys? Welcome back to Inside Out Precision. Um, bow review today. So um, there's been, I think kind of depending on where you are in the country, there's been either a lot of hype or no hype around this new PSE uh, Mach 30 DS. Now, personally, um, I think this bow has a lot of qualities that I, I like in a short bow. Uh, if you know me, I'm not a huge short bow guy, but this bow actually has a few things that, that make it stand out from other short bows in the sense that it doesn't feel as short as the axle to axle recommends. Um, so as usual, I did a speed test at 30 inches and 28 inches. I have arrows ranging from 520 down to 385. Um, I did not film that speed test just in the interest of time, um, but I have all the numbers written down here. I shot you know, two to three arrows and took the average of each one. And uh, I was actually extremely impressed with the speeds that I saw. Um, I think it actually, I'd have to go back and look at the numbers on the lift, but this is rated 10 feet a second slower. And I'm pretty sure it was right on par with the lift, which not to throw any shade on Matthews. It's obviously kind of the bow of the year right now with all the hype. Um, but I'm not sure where they got the numbers that they got because I have not seen a single review, even with everything in spec that really honestly even comes close to what they were rated. Uh, I think this bow actually shoots what it's rated at. So getting into the technical specs, um, 30 inches, axle to axle, has a six inch brace height, uh, comes in at only 3.6 pounds. So if you're not familiar with this bow, it is all carbon fiber. Um, they got a lot of cool color combinations as well. This is obviously the charcoal with uh, the subalpine lens on it. Looks pretty sweet. Um, features that it has with like a lot of bows now, um, it has the Picatinny mount on the front here. Uh, you can mount the, it has the dovetail on the back to mount uh, any sort of integrated rest or if you have like a ham ski, you can run the core mount on there. Um, so that allows you to suck a quiver up really nice and tight to this bow. Um, a couple other features that, that are different from last year. So you notice the roller guard here. Um, I don't want to say it, but they took a page out of Matthew's book here. Um, so this is kind of like that reverse assist where instead of the, the cables just running through the roller guard straight up and down, it's actually pushing out against that. Uh, the theory is that 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 helps with like when you're starting to draw the bow, it doesn't feel quite as hard. Um, I think this bow actually has a pretty darn nice draw cycle for being a short bow. Um, you know, I didn't have even right-handed because I'm left-handed. I didn't have any trouble getting this back at 30 inches and lots of times real short bows with a lot of reflex, you know, that last two inches, I've really got to like yank it to get it back right-handed. Um, and this was pretty smooth. Um, you can get this bow from a 50 pound up to an 80 pound peak weight. Uh, you can take 10 full turns out of the limb bolt. So if you had a 70 pound bow and you're just starting, you can get this bow down to like 48 pounds, um, pretty crazy. And then work your way up to that. Um, what else? Uh, oh, 338 feet a second is what it comes in at the IBO. And I, I think that is actually a legitimate rating. Um, in terms of the like the brace height and the reflex on the riser, so it does have three inches of reflex, which for a shorter bow, I get it. Um, you know, that's pretty typical. It's for me, it's more than I like to see. But then again, I I just with longer bows, you're going to get less reflex. That's why, generally speaking, longer bows are a little more forgiving. Um, their whole thing with this is that. At full draw, the string angle is more comparable to a longer axle to axle bow. Um, I was comparing some of the ones here, uh, you know, at full draw, like the distance between, I don't have something to measure the actual angle, but the distance between like where the string was coming off the cams. And it actually does have a pretty similar string angle to like a, like a 32 inch axle to axle bow. Um, you know, that is important because of that, especially at the longer draw lengths, like 30 inches, that string angle tends to get pretty severe on short bows. Um, and this didn't feel as uncomfortable to me as other bows. Now, if you're someone who has, you know, 27 to 28 and a half inch draw length, this bow is gonna be extremely comfortable. You shouldn't have to duck at all to like get into your anchor point. Um, part of that is the cam design. So this is the EC2 cam on this bow. Um, the way like where that string comes off this cam at full draw is it keeps it pretty high above the limb which helps alleviate that severe string angle uh, the other thing is just in with the geometry of the bow and this limb combination uh, the the end of the limb doesn't have a ton of throw in it meaning when i draw the bow that limb doesn't drop as much um, or flex as much with that little tip here um, if you are mounting a limb driven 
fall away rest, you need to mount it pretty close to the end of the limb. If you try to mount it like right here, there's not enough throw in that limb to get your rest to pick all the way up. So if you're gonna run like a ham ski or any sort of limb driven rest, you know, mount it as far back on this as you can. Like, you know, as close to the axle essentially as you can and still get it to stick. Um, but with that cam design and the combination of that minimal flex in that limb, um, it does maintain a better string angle. Uh, it is quiet, it has fairly little vibration and that was even without a stabilizer on there. Um, it does come with this little dampener, deadener thing on the bottom there. Um, that definitely helps as well. But, you know, I was, I was impressed um, with the way it shot. It, it feels a lot like the Mach 34 did, which I still think the Mach 34, you know, is probably the best carbon bow PSE's ever built. If I was going to shoot a PSE carbon bow, that would be the one I would shoot. Um, but that's because I'm a 30 and a half inch draw. This doesn't even go to my draw length and it's not, you know, with that long draw length, it's, it's more of a severe string angle than I would prefer. Um, again, that is a total personal preference. I try to keep these un unbiased, so I apologize for that. Um, but like I said, anything like 29 and under, this is going to be awesome. Um, it will go all the way down to a 24 and a half inch draw length. So where I'm excited for this bow is especially, you know, we have more and more women coming in the shop all the time now. They're, they're hardcore hunters, they're hardcore shooters, uh, and it's hard to find a bow, a high-end bow, that will, you know, A, give them any sort of performance, and B, go down to that, you know, 25, 24 and a half inch draw length. Um, so if, you know, if a gal wanted a 50 or 60 pound bow, um, it's lightweight, which is something that I think, I think more so than draw weight, it's harder to find a bow that just the physical weight is something that a lot of women you know, like to shoot. By the time you get a stabilizer and a quiver and sight and arrows and everything on the bow, um, you know, at only 3.6 pounds, even with everything else on there, you're probably still, you know, you might hit five pounds, maybe, you know, five and a half pounds. Um, maybe a little more than that, maybe five and a half, six pounds, but still, it's gonna be a pound lighter than any other option, pretty much. Um, the Matthews Lift has been popular with that as well with their mod system, but, um, one thing about carbon, which I think this gets misconstrued a lot, is people think that carbon is strictly for weight savings. While it is lighter than aluminum, obviously, um, it has better structural integrity to it, meaning they can build a carbon riser bow that will have less flex in a more rigid riser, essentially, and less flex than an aluminum bow in the same weight category to build a riser, and this was just talking to the engineers, you know, in order to build an aluminum riser that would have the same flex to it as the carbon risers, you would have a five and a half or six pound bow. So while you do maintain some weight, or you retain some weight savings, the biggest thing is that you get a more rigid riser with a similar weight to an aluminum bow. Uh, obviously, there are exceptions to that. You know, when, when PSE first came out with like the Mach 1, especially in the 80 pound models, it it was a nightmare. Like there just was not enough uh, structural integrity to that bow. It was like 3.4 pounds, um, just too thin everywhere. I don't know if the carbon weave was different on it, um, but there was issues tuning, especially at the longer draw lengths. Um, I have not seen that with this, with the new renditions. Like ever since the Levitate came out, they, they seem to have figured all that out. Um, one thing with the tuning on this, um, if you followed the channel for a while, you know that I shot the, the EVL 34 um, for a year, year and a half. Love that bow. I love this Evolve Cam system. Um, I like being able to go between the 80 and 90% let off depending on the draw weight that I'm, I'm pulling. Uh, and my only complaint with those PSEs, especially from a pro shop standpoint where I might be doing three or four of them a day, is that the shim system to shim the cam right and left uh, was a series of like four little shims on one side and two on the other. And in order to shim it, you pretty much had to put the bow in the press, take the strings off, you know, relax, relax the limbs, pull the axles, swap them around, put it back together. It, what should have taken me 30 seconds took me, you know, 10 minutes. Now they've got their easy 220 system, uh, which might be a little hard to see, but it's those shims on either side of the cam there, they actually clip on and off. So um, it's really easy. You do need to press your bow. You could probably do it without, but if that cam shifts when you pull it off, it's gonna be really hard to get that back on. So you want that bow pressed a little bit, um, but they just pop on and off. There's no issues. Like 
with the with the draw stop pulling past the cable where as before like on my evl if i as a well on a right-handed bow if i shim that cam all the way to the right the draw stop would it would hit the cable and then it would pull past it um which can cause a bow to derail it can lock up like if it goes if it goes past and gets hung up on that little draw mod right there the bow can lock up at full draw i actually had people come in with some of those the bow's just fully fully torqued <laughs> fully cocked at full draw and they're just like oh here and i'm just like oh like that is a freaking time bomb um but that does not happen on this they got a little bit wider footprint on the cam um it's just a solid solid system so i think it's a, a great addition to their lineup um you know, they, now i think they have a 32 a 34 and now a 30 inch carbon bow um for you guys that like to do a lot of spot and stock stuff um, in tight country, like I know some guys in Hawaii are loving this bow because they're you know they're belly crawling through the grass and stuff. Um, it's accurate. It's it's obviously compact. So you know like a lot of guys talking about turkey hunting out of a out of a ground blind. You know short long bows. That's the only time I've seen a long bow really be a detriment is if you have a lower ceiling ground blind. Um, you know you have to. Most of the time, those ang the roofs are angled like this, so when your bow arm is extended, your cam is at the lowest point of, of the roof, and sometimes it's really tricky to get a shot off in those. Um, so having a shorter bow in a scenario like that, obviously a tree stand, um, it's helpful. And like I said, this bow, even though it is a short bow by most standards, it's not, I think it has more forgiveness based on, so I had a left-handed one of these here um, that we sold, but um, I shot it for probably I don't know, I shot it for a week on and off, like before and after work, just playing with it. And uh, I was I was really impressed with it. Now I can only get, when the shop's closed, I can get like 38 yards here. So I couldn't stretch it out really far. Um, but, you know, it, it shot well. Um, I was I was impressed, you know, I was expecting it to honestly be a really squirrely little bow. Um, and it, it held well. Um, you know, I definitely had to play with stabilizers a little bit on it to get it to aim the way I wanted to. Um, but. I was, like I said, I was impressed. So that's enough about the technical side of things. Um, let's get into the speeds. So I've got my little cheat sheet here because I wrote them all down. Uh, so the first arrow that I have is at 30 inches, 70 pounds. And I set this 70 pounds on the nuts. Um, 520 grain arrow at 30 inches was 278 feet a second. 462 grain arrow was 297 feet a second. 420 grain arrow was 309. And a 385 grain arrow was 321. Now, when you do the math, generally three grains equates to about one foot per second. So when you, you know, 385, I'd get down to 350, you know, that's 35 grains. You're going to be about another 10 to probably 13 feet a second. So it's coming in barely under what it's rated at. Um, same arrows in 28 inch draw length. Uh, the 520 was 260.5. The 462 was 275.7. Uh, the 420 grain arrow was 289. Uh, it, was, it went 290, 289, 290. So let's call it 289 and a half. Uh, 385 was 298.6. So still even, you know, in the middle of its draw length range, it was still pretty darn efficient. Um, it draws nice, it shoots good speed. I think, you know, they, they win on a lot of levels with, with this bow. So if you haven't shot one already um, and you're looking for, you know, maybe you've had a longer bow in the past and you're like, yeah, I like it, but I kind of want to experiment with something. This would definitely be one on my list. Uh, I think this year in the short bow, short bow category, I think the Lift 29 and a half, this bow, um, you know, the, the Core SS by Bowtech is, it's 31 inches, so it's not, re, it's not really short. Um, but I think the lift in this bow kind of take the cake in that. You know, the Hoyt Alpha X30, that's a phenomenal bow too. Um, but those would be the bows personally that I would be looking at right now um, if you were looking for that little bit shorter axle to axle bow. So I know I didn't shoot it in front of you. Um, some people say like, oh, well you should have shot it because like we did a review on a different bow for the shop here, um, which by the way, Hunt G4 YouTube channel. Um, it will not only be archery, it's gonna be all things optics, packs, hunting gear uh or, you know we had the born and raised guys in today um so the hunt g4 podcast or not podcast excuse me hunt g4 youtube channel um go check that out um but we only have two episodes up right now 
but I didn't shoot the bow on there either. And some people were like, well, why didn't you shoot the bow? I want to hear it quiet. You can't really tell how quiet it is on a camera. You need to actually be there to hear it. Um, but I can tell you, I wouldn't say it's whisper quiet like they advertise. I mean, it's louder than a Matthews, but it is, it is not a loud bow by any means. Um, and it's smooth. So it's got a, a lot of the things that you look for in a bow. Um, and yeah, I think they I did a really good job with this. So anyway, go down to your local PSD, PSE dealer, pick one up, run a few arrows through it and tell me what you think. Uh, appreciate you guys watching today. As usual, remember precision is a decision. Keep them in the middle. I'll see you on the range.